This is Beyond the Crisis, Road to Economic Recovery. Transformation in effect from sugarland to modern farmland. The original brick plantation house is a stark reminder of when sugar was king in Jamaica. The reconstruction of the building perhaps symbolic of the much needed renewal and revolution of the local agriculture sector. This is the home of model agricultural production, approximately 3,000 acres of property situated in Innswood, St. Catherine. Some 300 acres of the property now in production in phase one of the project. It's designed to be the future of agriculture in Jamaica, utilizing modern technologies, innovative farming methodologies with a focus on research and innovation. We were first introduced to the property here on Beyond the Crisis by investor Michael Leachin, who insists the way forward in Jamaica was large-scale industrial production. So the discussion came, uh, came the, 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 the model of, again, which is not new to us in Jamaica, we've been talking about this uh, for many decades, of the mother farm slash satellite farm or small farm uh, concept. This was two years ago. Uh, I, I got frustrated because having had a discussion with Rada and realizing that this was a, a, a viable business model, I said, you know, what I should do is do it myself, get it as a catalyst to get it started, show Jamaican investors that the business of agriculture can be superlatively profitable at the same time, resurrect the uh, small farmers uh, in a way that they can live, they, they can produce in a stable way and ultimately have access to a middle class life. So what I did was start the process by leasing 2,860 acres of land from uh, Sugar Company of Jamaica, SCG, uh, uh, at Innswood. Deputy Farm Manager at Modern Agricultural Production, Princess Sili, shares with us the goal and mission of the enterprise. Modern Agricultural Production is a farming enterprise that produces, that plan to produce on about 3,000 acres of recovered sugar cane lands. Uh, the main aim of the company is to assist Jamaica with job creation, import substitution, and to also produce crops that is in high demand on the international market. We are also going to be producing in an effort to have consistent supply of varying crops that, that we would experience highs and lows throughout the year to ensure that we have a consistent supply for our customers here in Jamaica. So we plan on incorporating Israeli technology within the Jamaican context. So while we're incorporating or adopting some of the principles that are used in agriculture in Israel, we also want to ensure that we are fusing with some of the things that we would do in Jamaica to make it a little better. So for the export market, we're targeting pumpkins, sweet potatoes, and hot peppers. And for the local market, we're targeting uh, crops such as Irish potatoes, onions, broccoli, uh, cabbage, and sweet corn. So what is different on the operations on this farm as opposed to traditional farm? What's different here? The different here is a technology. We, we're sitting here and we look at the boom spray. The boom spray is the new technology. Uh, in Jamaica, it's the first time all the Jamaica see the, this boom spray. And Tell us what does it do? What does the boom spray do? The boom spray, it's princess. It's okay, so the boom spray is what we use for our pest and disease management of our crops. So we apply chemistries like herbicides, insecticides, fungicides on the crops when we observe particular problems um, with, with, with ranging across these spectrums with the crops. Of course, about the other kind. And the, the special, you work uh, uh, with, if we need for one uh, acre, two people or three people with the back spray, he make this in five minutes, ten minutes. One, he make ten minutes in uh, two acres in ten minutes. 
One of several unique features of modern agricultural production is the utilization of Israeli technology. Israel boasts a highly developed agriculture industry and is considered a world leader in agricultural technologies, although the terrain is not naturally conducive to farming. The irrigation manager is an Israeli national. Ms. Lee was quick to point out that the transfer of knowledge to local small farmers is a big part of the operations. She was responding to why Israeli techniques were workable in Jamaica. The, the weather conditions in Israel is similar. Yes, like this. Farm. It's, mm -hmm. yes. it's similar to Jamaica and what, whatever differences we find, we try to tweak what it is that we they would have done in Israel to adjust to our situation. Technology transfer is very important and that is why we have an, an Israeli manager, an Israeli manager here with us. So he will try to guide us with how things are done in Israel. But while we look at how it is done in Israel, we also try to see, even though it's done this way in Israel, our conditions here, we try to adjust the techniques to fit our local. The use of modern farm equipment is another feature of model agricultural production. These which have been sourced from countries such as Italy, Mexico and Israel are relatively new to the Jamaican landscape. Central to agriculture production is irrigation as the water is needed for crops to grow and to revegetate crops during periods of less than average rainfall. The irrigation system here employs massive pipelines which run underground. Currently, uh, laying the infrastructure for irrigation underground. So we have pipes that will be running underground and from there we will take subs from the pipes underground that will go onto the top of the fields and provide irrigation to the crops in the fields. Irrigation on the crops is very important. Many farmers in Jamaica in a lot of rural areas, they don't have irrigation and they rely solely on rain fed. Now here we're ensuring that we have the infrastructure in place to irrigate our crops and get the maximum yields out of our production cycles. Research is a major plank of this farm operation. The Irish Potato Project is an experiment on how the crop will do in Jamaica when planted outside the usual crop season of October and January. Ms. Lee, who's also an agronomist, explained that the process does not employ the traditional method of drip irrigation. This is our potato project and we planted to see if the crop would perform outside of the regular season for Irish potato. So far, the evidence that uh, from the production indicates that uh, it can be planted outside of the season. We have the foliage that's not exhibiting any of the regular blights or fungal problems that would normally affect the crop. So the crop is green and healthy. Many will say, well, the crop, the top is green and healthy. The important thing is, do we have tubers on the, the ground? When we check, currently, the performance of these potatoes are exceeding the national yield by twice the amount so far, but we won't be able to uh, validate until we taste and see what we get in June when we'll be harvesting. Coming this fall, we'll be putting in, we expect to put in at least 200 acres of Irish potato that would help to offset the demand that we have locally and for the imports to, to reduce imports that we currently have to be taking into the country. Once we harvest in June, the next step from there would be to go into large scale production of Irish potatoes that would help to offset importation of Irish potatoes and help to have a sustained supply throughout the year for consumers in Jamaica. The Onion Project is another research area to map this is another crop that model agriculture seeks to produce on a large scale to help to reduce importation and in turn help the economy of Jamaica. For this crop cycle, we're targeting at least 150 acres of onions and we are testing three varieties to see which of the three would perform best 
in this particular season. So when we have this time of the year, next year, we'll know which of the variety is best to plant to get maximum returns. During our visit, we spotted several workers doing weeding in the sweet potato patch. According to Ms. Lee, the farm will employ 300 persons in another few weeks during the harvesting period. During this time, a lot of um, persons are being laid off or uh, losing their, their jobs totally. It's quite the opposite here. We are actually employing more persons each week to assist with the production um, on the farm. Currently, we have workers here, more than 50 workers that are helping with weeding of some of our crops. So while we have a lot of machinery, we also want to ensure that we are providing work for the Systems Jamaica and that we're transferring knowledge regarding the production of various crops. The labor that we have, they help us with weeding, they help us with transplanting, they help us with setting up um, irrigation um, equipment. And being here, they learn so much. Some of the techniques that we are doing here, they, some of the persons who would have been uh, maybe farmers or worked on other farms would say that um, this is not always to be done, it won't, it's not being done well, but when they see the results of what it is that they're doing, they appreciate the techniques that, are, that is being transferred to them. With the sweet potatoes, it's not just about producing, it's also about research. So we have three varieties that we have um, planted now, that at the end of this production cycle, we'll be able to analyze data to find out which is the best performing and how various techniques that would have been used on the different varieties uh, would prove beneficial to us moving forward. Current, the sweet potato project, we're targeting at least for this cycle, 50 acres. That's our target. West Indian red pepper, scallion, sweet potato, carrots and onion are now in the ground under phase one of the project. Pumpkin is to be added later. You're watching Beyond the Crisis, Road to Economic Recovery.